increases the brain shrinkage and the soundness, then it improves the compressive strength and the flexible strength. So then, high performance concrete. So we discarded, based on the result, the 20 and 20 is suitable. So 25 and 30 percentage is discarded. So for all the strains, we have conducted the experiments. So these are the different uh, models. So here also we find that, uh, so from the, based on the results, we arrived from this, this uh, HPC experiment alone, 10 percentage is more suitable, which is also confirmed with the, the optimization techniques with the same data that has been given as an interpretation values. So this is a model of velocity, rebound hammer, ultrasonic pulse velocity test, durability properties such as uh, uh, water absorption, porosity, softivity test, alkanity. So, uh, Maybe I just uh, give you an idea. So, in the previous slide, in, in the introduction part, we have discussed that the value of the control is will be of some value that the pH value needs to be right. So, when you uh, go for an alternative material, any alternative material, we have to ensure that the, there is a reduction in the pH value due to the presence of high silica content, so magnesium content. So, however, the HPC calcium hydroxide is replaced gradually by the magnesium hydroxide in the present. So, this is also in giving an assurance that uh, the material is more suitable. So, this is an impact value analysis, acid resistance and the water, the sea water resistance, then the rapid glowing penetration test, water permeability, etc. So, so that's all about the high performance concrete. So, just as again, uh, more detail in the record of the results and discussion is very difficult to go with on our time. So, then coming back to this one, uh, without coarse aggregate, without uh, uh, an aggregate in the concrete, whether it is suitable to have a role of uh, having an enhancement in the property uh, like uh, durability or strength, we just uh, worked on engineering cementitious composite with the different SEMs and the fibers. So normally uh, engineering cementitious material means it gives you high tensile strength and the ductility of a sustainable concrete. So by using a blend of, uh, blended cements, so this uh, material is also called as your bendable concrete. They used to call this as a bendable concrete. So it will bend like this. The concrete itself having a property of bending like this. So you you can Google it and search. There are a lot of names available. Stain hardening concrete. You can call it as a stain hardening concrete. You can call it as a bendable concrete. Few people used to call it as an engineering cementitious composite. There are a lot of uh, terminologies available. So main objective here is on this uh, project. So uh, we find locally available cementitious material, and then alternative for the river sand we have analyzed with the uh, M sand. So uh, there will be a reduction in the cost as well as the carbon dioxide emission. So the development of ECC for the bridge deck overlays and the durability properties and there is a reduction in the cost as well as the environmental pollution. So, so to start with some new projects or new work, so we need to have a uh, analysis. So based on the literature, we find that the, uh, for example, this is a polyvinyl alcohol fiber which is used in the market for 54 percentage, hybrid fiber is for 12 percentage and uh, polyether fiber is for 13 percent and steel is for 8 percent and PP is for 5. Others are very nominal. So, so normally in engineering cementitious is concrete. So, this is all taken with a, a database of around uh, 3, 320 literatures. So, polyvinyl alcohol is used morely uh, in the engineering cementitious. Similarly, that the SEM is used in the, uh, so here the SEM is supposed to be called as your fly ash, silica fume, GGBS. So fly ash is maximum used of 62 percentage. So then uh, in current market, uh, there is a possibility of having a scope for working towards this material. So we took this PVA into account, but uh, we have alternated the uh, fly ash with different materials like uh, uh, rice cash and the sugar cane bagasses. So the fine aggregates used in the ECC is conventionally SS that is 33, 43 percent, river sand 11 percent, and locally available material is 19 percent. So there is a huge demand for the river sand. So alternatively, we have to go for some uh, M sand, manufactured sand. So 
that part is taken into account. So you can see uh, how the PE fiber is available and there is a uh, PVA fiber. So currently we are using this oiled PVA fiber. It's an unoiled PVA fiber and the steel fiber. So what are the detail tests that has been conducted? So this is somewhat uh, different. So you have a uh, quality analysis of the muslonic material as I previously mentioned that based on the microstructure in the laboratory itself we can understand about the performance by using these tests. One is strength activity index based on the composite strength, lime reactivity test, fraternity test and the uh, lime saturation method, electrical connectivity. So ASTM tells you that out of the six tests, if it satisfies any four tests, and then that material can be used as an alternative material. So like that, as I already pointed out, we have a sophisticated equipments like XRD and SEM and other Fourier transformation. So these are the general tests which we normally do. Then for specific problem, we, have, we need to understand about the specific type of test. So for example, this is an engineering symmetry material. Application, the project deals with the application of a bridge deck overlays for the overlay purpose we have to use. So when you use uh, a concrete with the ECC, then how the performance will be that we have to understand. So for that, we are supposed to have a bond strength between the cement and ECC, slant shear stress is connected, split cylinder is connected, split prism is connected, and then finally a slab test and above this. So what are the codal provisions? So uh, already you people are aware of this one. So, but uh, these three are specially for this application that is slant shear, ASTMC882, slant cylinder is ASTMC496 and slant prism is C882. So these are the three uh, special tests for the application. These are the different uh, size of the specimen that we use for conduction. So he is a scholar which uh, uh, is dealing with this engineering cemetery system. Field. So this is a fraternity test, the color changes. So in the laboratory itself we have a, a sophisticated instruments to measure the postmodic properties. So uh, which has been established recently. So we will do all the test on the end, confirm that the material is suitable. So uh, you may be wondering how this is conducted for a, a one material. No, it is not like that. So for example, if you take a rice cash, uh, we collect the rice cash directly from the market and we prepare from different suppliers. So all these three will be taken into account and it will be tested for the as per the protocol and we confirm that the which one is the best one. Like that we collect different, uh, we have different uh, protocols with us that uh, any material that is used for the research will be taken from different suppliers like uh, 5 or 6. So based on that two will be selected and one will be used for the research purpose. So this is a uh, various tests. So a special uh, mention about the CCC is the dark bone leg. So this is a dark bone leg spe uh, specimen. So which is used to ten, uh, direct uh, tensile strength of the ECC. So the fixture is uh, uh, fabricated and then it is uh, used for testing. So it is a very uh, minimum load that is applied towards it and ensure that uh, the breakage is properly carried out. If, uh, if so this is a conventional mortar and this is an ECC, you can see the difference how the breakage is happening in the clip flow. Any clip flow. can find the difference. So it takes long time to go for a crack uh, itself. It falls down from the instrument directly. So this is an equipment called as flexural jig assembly uh, fabricated for dealing with uh, cement mortar alone specimens. So the remaining sample is tested for compression using the compression jig assembly. So as I told you, uh, the slant shear, so one part is ECC and other part is conventional concrete. So which is of size 75 by 150 mm. So this is a failure portion. So exact failure will happen here. Similarly, this is a uh, split prism. So this is a conventional concrete, this is a ECC. So the splitting uh, happens with respect to ECC as well as the instrument. So 
this is ECC and then it's a conversion we come through. So how the split has been tampered. So there is a correlation. So we started with PVA fiber. Now we are working, planning to work with polypropylene fiber also regarding this one. So these are the uh, uh, normally available SEMs. So that is one thing. Then the nano silica based uh, cement. So you would have heard about the micro silicas. So we started working with nano silica to have some idea about the silica inclusions in the concrete. So we started with the different proportions. So what is the role is that only major role here is the pore structure is to be refined. So for refining the pore structure and accelerating the performance of the concrete in terms of hydration, we started working with nano silica. So the major uh, difficulty which we identified in the nano silica is uh, the dispersion. The, the dispersion of nano silica is not an easy task. So we now fabricated an instrument recently for dispersing the nano silica on our own by getting the nano silica from the market and dispersing with the dispersion ratio of uh, different proportions. So we started doing it. Otherwise, it is very difficult to uh, have a dis fully dispersed for a long time process. Uh, there are a lot, uh, lot of uh, limitations available. The agglomeration is a very major difficulty which we face. So this is a dry powder sample. <coughs> After dispersion, you can see how the process is taken in the room. So this is a single nano uh, particle. So which is represented here in the double layer. And so once the dispersion is carried out properly and there is a sufficient dispersed material is available, it is easily uh, transported for the production of your cement. So major thing is that uh, the utilization of the waste material. So we have a plan of using the nano silica with the CND waste. So currently we are working on the uh, construction uh, CND waste, uh, construction demolition waste also. So these are the uh, some literatures which we taken for uh, our purpose and uh, mixing sequence which we uh, uh, arrived for our nano silica which we prepared. So there are a lot of protocols in the literatures you can find but uh, uh, it cannot be adapted for our individual cases. So we have to develop our own protocols to prepare the material and it is used. To. Then finally this is a pro uh, sponsored uh, project by uh, company called Teraka but recently uh, Bulgapa groups, uh, I think Carbon and then there is a company which produces graphene. So we have a tie up with uh, both the companies to enhance the property by using the graphene. So from the graphite, so the graphene is a two dimensional honeycomb lattice of black colored carbon particles with the thickness of one atom. So the uh, introduction of this material into concrete is to reduce the micro level uh, tracks. So Basically, we started working in 2021 after COVID. Now we are getting wonderful results after a after long struggle of Again, the problem here is the dispersion. So the dispersion agent will vary and the proportions will vary. And finally, we are able to arrive certain things. So once it is used in the conventional part, now recently we worked on various uh, SEMs like uh, silica fume, uh, fly ash. So I will show you. Uh, I think this is uh, something, uh, I, this will not be very clear because uh, it is uh, to get a pattern of this one, so with the approval of the company, so I am not showing a detailed one. So this is the process which we do, the graphite, graphite is there, then there will be extra carried out and then there will be a dispersion medium that is used and finally we will get a graphite anoplates like this in the form of a dispersion. So this is a stem image of the graphene derivatives. So which will uh, clearly indicate that uh, it solves our problem in the micro level in the uh, concrete performance. So this is how graphene works. So cement, water, then there is a hydration. So if you have a graphene particles, then there is a possibility of CSG inclusions. So, so keeping the graphene as well as SCM, it is more advantage to reduce the cost, but uh, uh, we are working on it because uh, graphene is not a very easy material to get from the market. Per kg it is of around 8,000 rupees in the market. Per kg if you get a graphene, it is of, uh, in the powder form it is 8,000, but if you get in a dispersed form it is more higher than the 8,000. So we are working on it, so we will be uh, 
coming to a conclusion with the production of the graphene as well as the conventional usage in the construction industry also. They are working on it. So this is a fly ash uh, locked to water and then when you add the graphene into it, how this is reaction. So this uh, everything is uh, removed from the place and it starts moving towards all these things. So all will be placed and packed perfectly in the material. This is for the silica fume. This is for the rice as cash. So we started, uh, once the conventional concrete gets satisfied, we started working with SCMs also. So these are the pressure property. So majorly we deal with, uh, so the, all other things are normal conventional testing. So majorly in the graphene we deal with electrical conductivity, electrical resistivity and then uh, thermal conductivity and uh, uh, by using Recipot we used to do all this text and uh, electrical resistivity meter we used to do the test and ensure the electrical conductivity props which we use in our laboratories so thermal conductivity equipment heat flow meter okay, that's all this is all about just uh, you want to brief about the works which we carried out in the laboratory uh, so my acknowledgement goes to the management principal uh, PhD College of Technology. So, since the last 10 years, they have given me a lot of funds and uh, now initiated with different uh, industries for uh, tie-up. Uh, and the scholars which we uh, together worked for a long period. And any questions, you can ask. I think some research insights I have given, but I don't want to go deeper into the results and discussion part. So it will take, for a single material, it will take long time to discuss. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Sir, in current market it is of uh, uh, 8,000 rupees, sir. but uh, here we use graphene in very uh, minor percentage, that is 0.2 percentage, 0 .0, uh, we started with 0 0.02, we reached 0 0.01 percentage till now, but we are getting the uh, strength enhancement in 0 0.03 percentage actually. In, I mean about the dispersion, not the powder form of the graphene. Just out of curiosity, so you had very tiny bit of uh, graphene. graphene and then what is the difference between an OPC and a graphene added? What is the difference that you see? Sir, actually uh, the main thing is to fill the micro cracks. So normally we used to get uh, different uh, cracks in the structures. So what this graphene nanoplates will do is, uh, so there are different uh, terminologies like graphene dioxide, like that, from the graphite, we are uh, extracting the graphite nanoplates with using a uh, dispersion medium. So this dispersion medium is a eco-friendly material, uh, which they are normally other companies they are not using. It. <coughs> so based on that, uh, for example, uh, uh, what are I am saying is 0.02 percentage means it is of uh, two grams of graphite, which will go for a dispersion. So it will disperse. And it will sustain for more than two years of time, sir. Uh, two grams of uh, graphene or how much uh, quantity of concrete? One m cube of concrete. So one liter cube, two grams? So two grams. The two grams is sufficient to arrest all the pores? Uh, we are working on it, sir. Just we started with this. So we are working on it. Mostly I think 0 0.02 to 0 0.8 is more than sufficient. So we have to arrive the exact uh, proportion, what is the optimum amount. Okay, but uh, the, the, the reason fly ash is so popular is because it does the same role of arresting the so How different is graphene from fly ash? Fly ash is much cheaper, graphene okay. is more expensive. So how do you justify this to be uh, industrialized? Sir, actually there is a huge demand for fly ash now. So, uh, when there is fly ash, a... kilogram of fly ash is not 8,000 rupees. No, 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 no. So that's why I'm asking. Yes, sir, exactly. It is costly, sir. It is costly, but only thing that we can do is the dispersion medium. So I am telling about the 8,000 for the powder sample graphene, sir. When we reduce the cost of the dispersion medium, 
So automatically the cost of the material to be used in the construction also will be reduced. Okay. Thank you. About sir, personal, personal. One seven two seven sir. Two seven. Okay. It is a A standard, which is. The cement code that you benchmark. So the one two two six two is a conventional for a OPC sir, OPC cement. Yeah. Now it is only two six nine. Yeah, yeah, sir. All OPCs come under. All. Because there is a restriction on chemistry. Yes sir. Yes sir. Which method? IGM. PC IGM. Ah, PC IGM. PC IGM. Mix design, mix design, mix design. You you follow it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm a big fan of that method. This entire exercise you are doing to look out for this fabric that you are making or normal fabric? Fabric, sir. Fabric, sir. Concrete fabric. You will roll it and just spread it and sprinkle water. So the quantity of this thing required is to fill up it for micro pores within the triad particles also. So this the nano particles they are trying to develop is going to enhance the performance of triad or other cement based material along with cement so that the micro pores will come to almost zero. That is the target that they are. Exactly, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Department of Civil Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, I consider it a privilege to thank Dr. S. Praveen Kumar for taking his time out from his busy schedule and enlightening us with his presence. Thank you, sir, for the informative and thought-provoking session on cementitious materials, engineered cementitious composites and high-performance concrete. It was indeed research insightful. We look forward to more of your presence in our future events. Thank you once again, sir. Uh, with this, we come to an end of day one of the two days SARB sponsored national conference on smart and energy efficient construction materials and technologies for sustainable infrastructure. Thank you, everyone. Now we have an online technical presentation session.